This is Twit. You guys started Mac Break Weekly this week talking about Tim Cook's uh, note in Time Magazine. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you read it into the podcast. I'm going to read it into ours because it's short. And my take is a little different. First of all, I couldn't understand <laughs> everybody's take on Mac break because they everyone it was so such a hot topic. Everyone was talking at once, and, I know. and it was like, "Whoa, okay, what <laughs> happened?" Everybody had to get <laughs> their word in there. <laughs> what happened? So, okay, so last week, Time Magazine printed a statement by Apple's Tim Cook, which took aim at, and this is, I think, the significant part of this. This is not Apple versus Google. And Facebook, which is how it's it's so easy to paint that with a broad brush because that meme has been established. What Apple did, what, what Tim Cook did, was take aim at what is the largely hidden data brokerage industry, which has quietly sprung up over the past decade. And we've touched on it on this podcast from time to time, sometimes as I'm doing some research, I'll encounter one of their those chilling websites where they tout everything they know about us, you know, because they're like they're trying to sell this this intelligence gathering capability to an, an audience different than ours. Um, and I often will share that on the podcast because it just kind of gives me the creeps. So I think that Tim raises some important points. Um, and as I said, you know, it, this is not the accepted Apple versus Facebook and Google profit models where, you know, where Apple is saying, we don't profit from the collection of your data, but they do. Um, and that's not what he wrote. Uh, so here's what he said. He said, we all deserve control over our digital lives. That's why we must rein in the data brokers. In 2019, it's time to stand up for the right to privacy. Yours, mine, all of our, all, all of ours. Consumers shouldn't have to tolerate another year of companies irresponsibly amassing huge user profiles, data breaches that seem out of control, and the vanishing ability to control our own digital lives. The problem is solvable. It isn't too big, too, talent, too challenging, or too late. Innovation, breakthrough ideas, and great features can go hand in hand with user privacy, and they must. Realizing technology's potential depends on it. That's why I and others are calling on the U.S. Congress to pass comprehensive federal privacy legislation, a landmark package of reforms that protect and empower the consumer. Last year, before a global body of privacy regulators, I laid out four principles that I believe should guide legislation. First, the right to have personal data minimized. Companies should challenge themselves to strip identifying information from consumer data or avoid collecting it in the first place. Second, the right to knowledge, to know what data is being collected and why. Third, the right to access. Companies should make it easy for you to access, correct, and delete your personal data. And fourth, the right to data security, without which trust is impossible. He says, but laws alone aren't enough to ensure that individuals can make use of their privacy rights. We also need to give people tools that they can use to take action. To that end, here's an idea that could make a real difference. One of the biggest challenges in protecting privacy is that many of the violations are invisible. For example, you might have bought a product from an online retailer, something most of us have done. But what the retailer doesn't tell you is that it, it then turned around and sold or transferred information about your purchase to a data broker, a company that exists purely to collect your information, package it, and resell it to yet another buyer. The trail, he writes, disappears before you even know there is a trail. Right now, all of these secondary markets for your information exist in a shadow economy that's largely unchecked, out of sight of consumers, regulators, and lawmakers. He says, and he finishes, let's be clear, 
you never signed up for that. We think every user should have the chance to say, wait a minute, that's my information you're selling, and I didn't consent. Oh, and he says, meaningful, comprehensive federal privacy legislation should not only aim to put consumers in control of their data, it should also shine a light on actors trafficking in your data behind the scenes. Some state laws are looking to accomplish just that. But right now, there's no federal standard protecting Americans from these practices. That's why we believe the Federal Trade Commission should establish a data broker clearinghouse requiring all data brokers to register, enabling consumers to track the transactions that have bundled and sold their data from place to place and giving users the power to delete their data on demand freely, easily, and online once and for all. And he finishes, as this debate kicks off, there will be plenty of proposals and competing interests for policymakers to consider. We cannot lose sight of the most important constituency, individuals trying to win back their right to privacy. Technology has the potential to ch to keep changing the world for the better, but it will never achieve that potential without the full faith and confidence of the people who use it. So anyway, I, I just think, yes, um, you know, he's right that we know that this, that this shadow economy exists. Um, and, and once again, I find as I read this, I find myself feeling as though we're still in the very early days of this explosion in processing power, the collapse in the cost of mass storage, which has enabled endless compilation of these these profiles and like every scrap and tidbit of data can be sucked in and retained, which you couldn't do if it was like prohibitively expensive to do that. Um, and of course, the connectivity created by the Internet. And not surprisingly, the regulatory framework that's needed to govern the implications of these changes lags far behind. Um, and, you know, if any of us who have, and we often have, have listened to our policymakers talk or listened to congressional testimony and hearings and the questions that they ask demonstrate that, the, <coughs> that you know, that the those who would create the regulations barely have any idea how this stuff works. And I don't have any idea how powerful the lobbying clout is of these data brokers, but it, you know, it might be significant. And unfortunately... As we know, uh, money drives a lot of uh, this country's politics. So, so w was there any sort of a conclusion from from the discussion that you guys had, Leo, in in Mac break? Well, conclusion like, is this a good idea? I think everybody thinks it's a good <laughs> idea, right? Is there any chance it could happen? Not I a just, chance in hell. But that we didn't no. actually uh, talk about that. Uh, the right. fear, of course, is uh, so. I think you're a trifle, I don't want to say naive, but you're, you're, okay. you're a nice guy in thinking that Tim Cook's just talking about data brokers. Because really, he may not say Google and Facebook, but anytime Apple talks about privacy, there is always the subtext of we do it right. Always. Yes, well, so, I do agree that this is brilliant marketing. It's, I mean, yeah, this okay, is, so you're not naive. Great. You understand. No, no, no. He I may not I'd, say it I'd, explicitly, but it's always yes. about us versus yes. Google and Facebook. That's, yes. you know, yeah, it's about data brokers. But yeah. And the one thing we did point out is that if Apple were really serious about this, they would, for instance, not require everybody to use Google as your search in Safari on uh, the iOS device. But the reason they do it is because Google gives them $9 billion a year. Actually, this year it'll be, according to some estimates, $12 billion <coughs> to be the search tool. And if you don't, if you, if you want to protect privacy, Whoa. <laughs> you don't give it to Google. And so I, so I guess that means you, you what you use a different browser and use DuckDuckGo. Yeah, DuckDuckGo of... has a browser. Apple should, if Apple really cared about this, it seems to me they would at least give you the option to use DuckDuckGo and Safari, right? Yep. They don't because it's billions of dollars in the pocket. 
So so it's a little, you know, that's a point to be made also. As soon as you use an iPhone, the minute you put Facebook on it, forget it. It doesn't matter how secure Apple is. You've got Facebook on there. You're, you're being yep. spied upon immediately. So that is, it's reasonable for Tim to say we want these regulations because, you know, users are going to put Facebook on our beautiful, pristine, private phones. And <laughs> and then, you know, it's just as bad as any <laughs> other phone. <laughs> Finally, right. the other thing that we talked uh, about is that one of Apple's big fears, every company's big fear, is not that uh, there'll be federal regulation. Everybody, by the way, including Google and Facebook, are calling for federal regulation. But that the states will – the reason they do that is because the states will individually, as California has, impose Ooh, their yes. own privacy rules. And then you have a crazy quilt of 50 different rules. I mean, you already have to do GDPR. That's the other thing is that every company that does business in Europe is already doing most of those four points because GDPR. And you probably requires. saw that Google got hit with a massive yeah, GDPR 50, fine. 50 million euros, yeah. By yeah. the way, for kind of something dumb. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's like, okay. But 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 you're right. Um, we, we, we talked about the, the, the lack of federal oversight in the case of network neutrality, where, again, having every state – have their own legislation. It's just a, a nightmare for the carriers. No. And you know, we, it isn't a nightmare. They know that they don't have to worry about it. And the feds have already yep. said the states can't do it. Yep. Marco Rubio from Florida has already yep. proposed in Congress a rule that says states can't make their own privacy regulations. Leave it to uh, the big boys. Leave it to the <laughs> That's right. We'll take care and of it. And the presumption is, I mean, maybe he, maybe, I mean, that is, that is probably the right thing to do, but the presumption is that they will then, you know, by getting all the power in the federal Congress, be able to uh, write their own laws, these these data brokers, and, and we w they won't have to worry about anybody. So, <sighs> yeah, well, I don't know if it'll happen. There There is definitely a current going in the country that people want this. So maybe it will. It's, there's well, as, it's as long as the, tough. As long as the head of the Data Brokers Association <laughs> doesn't is not put is not put in charge of drafting the legislation. It rain. <laughs> yeah. When have we seen that before? <laughs> that uh, never let, me, happened. let me think. Yeah, it never happened. I think ultimately Speaking we're going to have to protect our own privacy, and we're going to you know yep. use duck duck and things like that, right? Uh, exactly, and that's yeah. what this podcast is. One of the I things bet. this podcast is about.